Good morning. I was just getting ready to start and I thought, oh, I'll wait a, a minute longer. How are you, Donna? Let me see. I think you're muted. There you go. How are you? Good. Good, good. That's, that's great. How have you been? Great. I, um, I missed last week only because I had gone to the conference the week before and talked to some captioning people and they wanted me to try captioning a class. So I was out captioning a class down here. It was fun. That's awesome. Did you yeah. like it? Yeah, I did like it. For, for now, it would be good. That's awesome. And was it in like a, a college classroom or where? This one happened to be a high school classroom, which was really kind of fun. That's really awesome. Key and, and really fun. And then yesterday I went to a college class. You did. So the, the high school class, was this for like a high school student that is yeah. hearing impaired? Okay. Oh, that's so neat. Yeah, it was fun. That's awesome. Yeah, then yesterday was a philosophy class at a college. It's like two miles away from me. So it was really convenient and really fun. That's awesome. So did they want you to kind of do that for now while you're waiting to take uh, the Yeah. That's an option I can do now. Um, but most of the classes you don't well, you do provide a transcript but they it's real time it's going to their tablet or their computer it's a little bit intimidating um i don't want it to be you know if i had to edit <laughs> still yeah so, but you know it's good practice the only problem is it doesn't have to be verbatim so you can you know if you come upon a word like that word is not my dictionary like the teacher yesterday said like Tazikistan or some crazy I was like that's not in my dictionary <laughs> right right <laughs> you exchange it for something else or you know you can change it. <laughs> you know it I get habit right now you know yes yes which is you know you just have to make sure that you can turn one off and turn on the other and know okay now it's verbatim so I've got to get every word but right but it's nice to know that you have that option when you are you know, you are doing, providing cart that you can, yeah, that is, that's very nice. If you know yeah. that it's not going to be in your dictionary, then you can substitute it for something else. And right. that's awesome. So the student, you said it goes right to their tablet. So what, when they get home, they can just print it out if they want. Yeah. So they, ha they can read along in class so that they can participate in the class. Mm -hmm. And then, um, when I get home, they you usually have either that day or the next day, you just submit the transcript to the company and they send it to the student. Okay. So they have a copy of that transcript too. That's awesome. So you just go home that night and kind of make your, your you know, do and editing and then send it in. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and the student yesterday actually had um, sign language provider there in class with him. So he wasn't even, so he didn't, look at his tablet, he just had someone signing to him, and then we just send him a transcript at the end of the day. So that one wasn't real time, and that's really nice. I'm like, okay, but I can do that. Yeah. But awesome. it's a good option just now, like, just in case I don't pass <laughs> this KSR right away. Yeah. I can do that and still be getting lots of experience, and, you know. Right. It'll pay for my next test, so. That's right. That's yeah. right. Exactly. And, and some people choose to do that. They love, that's the line of work they want to go into and they love it. And both, yeah. both the people I shadowed are that way. The, um, one of them has passed the CSR, but she just like, eh, I love this. And she mm -hmm. said, she makes plenty of money. And she's like, I don't have to do transcripts, you know, like you would in court. And, uh, she just loves it. Yeah. And then yesterday the, the girl was like, yeah, I didn't pass anything. She was at stage two. And she, so when the, when Sage closed, she just, she was already kind of doing this. So she just started doing it more and she's like, yeah, it's fine. It works for me. But when California passes the new legislation, like we're all going to get jobs because we don't have a license. Right. 
Right. And that's, that's exactly what <clears throat> we used to tell SAGE students. You know, that's, that's a great possibility that they may do that. It may yeah. pass where you have to have a license because you, you know, I, I think that they get students sometimes that are in the, at the low end of this, you know, 160, 170, even right. you know, 180 and, and they're not getting a lot of what they need to get. So I think that that's kind of happened. And, and so that's been thrown out there. And that's why we told those students still get your license because you, you, know, you can still do that if you choose, you know, if that's what you want to do, but get your license so that if they pass that, then you're not going to be out of a job, you know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to stay on my course and, you know, so was it a company that sent you to the, was it the same company that sent you to the two jobs yeah. that you went on? It was funny because I'm, and then I'll stop talking. I am um, at the convention. There would be all the booths set up, you know, and I was walking by and I saw a captioning booth and it said, we need captioners in San Diego. And I was just like, yeah, I don't want a caption. I want to go to court. You know, you know I want to, I'm doing my thing, you know, I'm not, not doing that. But no one was stopping and no, they're like alone. <laughs> so I, I'm like, okay, I'll bite. So I stopped and talked to them for a while, and they were just like, well, you passed your RPR? I said, yeah. And they said, then just come on down, you know, give it a try. If you don't like it, was it going to hurt to try? And so, yeah, it, so I don't okay, I'll try it. And, oh, awesome. um, it's, you know, I think it's doable. It is, you know, I'm not getting every word verbatim. Sometimes they go pretty fast, and, like, there's chemistry classes and all kinds of, you know, crazy other words I wouldn't know or be in my dictionary. So it definitely be something I have to build, you know, a lot of them. That's going to help me all anyway. Yes. So absolutely. Yeah. It's only yeah. going to build your dictionary. And like you said, it's a way to make money while you're waiting for the test. So, right. you know, and just, just, I think just to have that experience as another avenue, that's going to help yeah. you, when you go to, you know, you fill out your resume and, and you can say, I've, you know, yeah. I've, I've Provided card captioning, yeah. I, I think that's going to only benefit you. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I hadn't thought about that. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. Because then you you know you've got some experience. So yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get started, and I'll I'll unmute you after class. Okay. All right. Here we go. Hold on one second. Okay. So let's start with some common words. Okay, here we go. Ready? Returned, during, lot, city, pretty, future, weather, need, came, forward, certainly, men, trust, above, thanking, pleasure, sorry, regard, written, years, past, stock, away, life, rather, material, paper, high, why, further, fine, really, desire, Taken, though, suppose, new, seems several, satisfactory, help, understand, bill, close, covering, guess, room, sold, sister, opinion, train, law, low, one time, he, get, do, been, wetter, can, would, she, when, wrote, hard, doing, far, list, cover, set, right, advise, company, enclosed, since. All right, moving right into our phrases. Here we go, ready? Does he have, do I have, do you have, I can't have, I didn't have, I don't have, if you have, I have, it would have, may have, shall have, should have, so I have, so you have, that have, that I have, that you have, there have, they have, to have, we have, what have, what I have, what you have, when have, when you have, where have, where I have, where you have, whether I have, whether or not I have, whether or not you have, whether you have, which have, which I have, which you have, who have, will have, would have, who have, he believed, he believes, he could, he feels, he felt, he is, he recalled, he recalls, he recollected, he recollects. All right, moving into some shop doublets. Torque belt, spindle shaft, brake shoe, dust shield, cutter housing, sharp blade, caster fork, wing blade, drive shaft, felt washer, space retainer, air cleaner, pivot nut, bracket support, hairpin cotter, ignition switch, brake drum, double groove, caster wheel, drill press, fuel filter, 
belt tension, variable speed, dual pulley. And I have some sentences that focused on accept, exception, uh, neighbor, neighborhood, little, absolute. So you probably know all of those briefs, right? Except is uh, XEPT, exception, XEPGS, neighbor and long AB, neighborhood and long ABD, little LIL and absolute is salute. Right here are your sentences. The house was an, an absolute mess. What is an absolute number? They had absolute proof of the crime. Are you absolutely sure about that? He was absolutely in favor of the move. Ken conceded that it was absolutely true. Philosophers don't believe in absolutes. Politics does not deal in absolutes. Death is one of the absolutes of life. The papers are all here except that one. Everyone has left except Marilyn. The houses are well kept except that one. The sales tax law accepts food purchases. The cost of the tour accepts children. The parking law accepts the handicapped. The law accepted seeing eye dogs. The admission price accepted children. The new rule accepted seniors. Is the school accepting the alumni? The rule is accepting them from the tax. We are accepting out of date tickets. He took exception to everything I said. They did not make an exception for me. Will you make just one exception? The exceptions would fill volumes. The record was full of exceptions. The law had far too many exceptions. She has exceptional talent. David showed exceptional skill. That paper was really exceptional. He is doing exceptionally well. Linda is exceptionally gifted. I am exceptionally tired tonight. That man is our next door neighbor. My neighbor borrowed the lawnmower. I really don't know my neighbor. Mr. and Mrs. Jones are our neighbors. Our neighbors have two big dogs. Those people are the new neighbors. We just moved into the neighborhood. We are planning a neighborhood party. She lives in a pleasant neighborhood. There is a shed on the neighboring lot. That section is in a neighboring area. We have the neighboring property. My little boy played with the train. She was more than a little surprised. Mia brought the little dog home. All right, we've got a state drill. This focuses on, um, well, I'm gonna give you the states and then I'll give you the sentences that have the states in them, okay? Here we go. Maine, Alabama, Alaska, Louisiana, Arizona, Kentucky, Arkansas, Kansas, California, Iowa, Colorado, Illinois, Connecticut, Idaho, Hawaii, Delaware, Georgia, Florida, Maryland, Utah, Massachusetts, Vermont, Michigan, Virginia, Minnesota, Washington, Mississippi, West Virginia, Missouri, Wisconsin, Montana, Wyoming, Nebraska, Texas, Nevada, Tennessee, New Hampshire, South Dakota, New Jersey, Rhode Island, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, New York, Oregon, North Carolina, Oklahoma, <clears throat> North Dakota, I Ohio. And here are your sentences. Fishing is good in Alabama. Do you come from Missouri? Alaska has too much rain. They mine copper in Montana. We saw cacti in Arizona. They raise corn in Nebraska. We took a jet to Hawaii. Lake Mead is in Nevada. They mine silver in Idaho. Did you leave New Hampshire? Abe was born in Illinois. Where is New Jersey? She went to school in Iowa. He lives in New Mexico. Pikes Peak is in Colorado. We are going to North Carolina. Key West is in Florida. We raise wheat in North Dakota. He is a Mississippi riverboat pilot. They grow cotton in Tennessee. Minnesota is a land of many lakes. He has a lumber mill in Oregon. Is Lake Michigan polluted? He mined coal in West Virginia. Plymouth Rock is in Massachusetts. Rhode Island is a small state. They did live in Maryland. Utah is the beehive state. The lobster came from Maine. We moved to South Carolina. She ate fresh Georgia peach. Wisconsin is a dairy state. Dover is the state of Delaware. It snows in Utah and Wyoming. We live in New Orleans, Louisiana. Our home is in Virginia. Kentucky is the bluegrass state. They raise sheep in Wyoming. Kansas is the sunflower state. We went skiing in Vermont. He took his race car to Indiana. He struck oil in Texas. He had a dairy farm in Connecticut. 
Oklahoma has many oil wells. Arkansas has many pine forests. Ohio is the Buckeye State. All right, my next drill focuses on, whoops, just dropped my, one of my papers. Um, this is going to um, have two words join, that has and joining the two words, okay? Here we go, ready? Gas and oil, read and write, chair and table, pen and ink, light and dark, back and forth, army and navy, tall and handsome, salt and pepper, home and garden, bed and breakfast, sunny and hot, red and green, over and under, nose and throat, off and on, right and left, land and sea, up and down, hot and cold, tall and slim, cars and trucks, eyes and ears, cats and dogs, truck and trailer, robe and slippers, hammer and nails, cup and saucer, bread and butter, dollars and cents, black and white, arm and leg, tall and slim, short and fat, nuts and bolts, pots and pans, stars and stripes, top and bottom, pencil and paper, house and garage, bride and groom, surf and sand, front and back, knife and fork, over and out, hat and coat. All right. We've got some sentences that focus on the final NT contraction. Here we go. We haven't got it. He won't testify. Don't mention it. You can't miss the sign. He didn't buy the book. She wasn't in the house. He doesn't expect to win. We aren't in agreement. Dogs won't be allowed in. Ted hadn't bought the lot. I don't like to watch that. The order isn't accurate. It isn't good to postpone it. He didn't learn to operate it. It doesn't make a difference. I shouldn't forget the date. Doesn't the car run well? He didn't want to exercise. I won't agree to call you. We aren't ready to comply. It isn't related to your work. We couldn't see a movie. Anne hasn't read the letter. Bob wouldn't believe her. Won't you read the sign? Frank can't admit to it. The men wouldn't quit. I didn't see it happen. Wasn't there a copy for you? Didn't we pay that bill? The car hasn't been fixed. We, do, we don't risk much on it. Bill hadn't sneaked out. Steve can't see the point. The owner wouldn't agree. He won't take the bus. Mary can't help you. He can't seem to fix it. Hasn't the witness arrived? Don't forget the alternatives. The doctors weren't with her. They aren't here yet. <clears throat> the court isn't open. Didn't the women own stock? It wasn't anything to speak of. <clears throat> All right, our last drill. Well, actually I've got two more drills. I've got one address drill, and then I've got a one or two word drill, okay? Using uh, article A. All right, here we go, ready? A cute kitten has an acute case of cat fever. Please mark a cross on this drawing to show where he went across the street. They reached an accord on the price of a cord of wood. He is a ward of the court and cannot spend his award. Fred bought a side of beef and set it aside for the winner. I assure you that fleet lady in the fifth race is a sure thing. He wanted to buy a Ford convertible, but he couldn't afford it. He said that a round trip to work is about 10 miles if he goes around the lake. All right, moving on to names and addresses. Here we go, ready? Ms. Nancy T. Perino, P-E-R-R-I-N-O, 5207 Pierce Road, Warren, Ohio, 44581. Ms. Lisa G. Postiny, P-O-S-T-I-N-Y, Lincoln High School, 1320 South Olympus Drive, Naperville, Illinois, 60565. Mr. Ronald L. Bolam, B-O-L-A-M, Alternative Education Program, 
Park Avenue School, 5171 Park Avenue, room 404, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, 15102. Ms. Sylvia McTagg, M-C-T-A-G-U-E, West Texas State University Council, Counseling and Testing Center, P.O. Box 1401, West Station, Canyon, Texas, 79016. <clears throat> Ms. Audrey H. Hextel, H-E-X-D-A-L-L, 425, Ingleside Avenue, Aurora, Illinois, <clears throat> 60506. Mr. Ken L. Steinberg, S-T-E-I-N-B-E-R-G, Robert McQueen High School, 6050 Lancer Street, Reno, Nevada, 89503. Ms. Patty Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, -O -N, Route 1, Box 167, Gravity, Iowa, 50848. Jean A. Thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, Route 1, Box 66, Rutherford, South Dakota, 57004. Tarpoon Springs Senior High School, 1410 Gulf Road, Tarpoon Springs, Florida, 33589. Attention, Marilyn Albright. All right. Moving right into literary. <clears throat> And this is on child support inequalities. And uh, I will read this. I'll read this at 180. Okay, so here is a uh, word list for you. <clears throat> Acrimony, alleviating, automatic, implicit, inescapable, garnishment, discrepancy, non-custodial, revolutionary, alimony, equalize, legislative. Okay. All right, so I will read this at 180. There we go, ready? When California passed the nation's first no-fault divorce law in 1970, judges, lawyers, and sociologists hailed the measure as a revolutionary step designed, in part, to remove all the acrimony from the divorce process to allow people to remain parents to their children. 40, or excuse me, 50 years later, acrimony may have declined, but so have economic protections for millions of women and children. 85% of divorced women are awarded no alimony at all. When judges divide family income, they often give the husband two thirds and the wife and children one third. <clears throat> Despite court orders, non-custodial fathers repeatedly failed to pay nearly $4 billion in child support each year. As a result, divorced women and their children experience a 73% drop in their standard of living during the first year, while their former husbands enjoy a 42% rise in theirs. These are among the sobering statistics from a 10-year study of divorce based on an analysis of 2,500 divorce records and interviews with hundreds of judges, attorneys, and divorced men and women. <clears throat> the hardest hit have been middle and upper middle class women, groups formerly protected by alimony and child support. Alimony awards to mothers of preschool children have dropped more than for any other group, with only 13% receiving spousal support. The evidence is just inescapable that some lawyers and judges are saying that if women want equality, this is a way to give them equality. These technical attempts at equality are misguided because of the economic inequalities between men and women in the larger society. In the near future, there doesn't seem to be the kind of equality among women that would allow the premise of the current law, which is that men and women can be equal, equally responsible for supporting themselves after a divorce. This is essential because women are still much more likely to be the primary caretakers of the children in most families. Alleviating some of the injustices in the system requires a redefinition of marital property. Instead of counting only tangible assets, such as the family income, furnishings, cars, and investments, courts must consider career assets. These include pensions, health insurance, education, and professional licenses. 
to exclude these from divorce settlements is like promising to divide the family jewels equally, but allowing the husbands to keep all of the diamonds. There are still discrepancies in career assets. The only way to be fair about dividing assets is to add them together and then divide them equally. Marriage is a partnership. If two people really believe in the partnership, everything they acquire during the marital partnership should be joint property and should be divided equally. The call for legal and judicial change becomes more urgent in light of recent census data. Projections show that 60% of all children born in the United States today will spend part of their lives in single parent families. Among women in their 20s today, 40% can expect to be in a single parent family at some time. Already half of single mothers, head of household families, live in poverty. To reduce that poverty, it was recommended that child support awards be based on an income sharing approach to equalize the standard of living in the custodial and non-custodial household after divorce. Awards should include automatic adjustments for cost of living increases. One progressive step came in October when the child support enforcement amendments went to, into effect, requiring wage garnishment and intercepts on income tax refunds for parents who do not pay court order child support. Studies show that men who earn between $80,000 and $100,000 a year were just as likely not to comply fully with child support orders as men who only earn $50,000. It is so easy for them not to pay, so optimal that they know they can get away with it. Hiding money is another factor. A law has now been recommended mandating support for children over 18 who are still dependent. There are women who aren't getting child support because their kids are over 18 years of age and are supposed to be independent, who in fact are supporting children in college. For these older women divorcing after long marriages, there must be clauses allowing them to keep the family home and maintain the same standard of living as their ex-husbands. Beyond these legislative reforms, how can women protect themselves while they are still married? First, it is most important that all women stay knowledgeable about the type of assets they have. In addition, these women should consider a legal contract that says, in effect, if I take time out from my career to be a mother, to invest in your career, to be a helpmate, then we have to recognize that I deserve something in return for that. In fact, that's the implicit contract. All right. <clears throat> Moving right into jury charge. I will read this at 200. Okay. Here we go, ready? Well, I think it is proper rebuttal. I mean, you challenged Ron's findings and I will overrule the objection. Go ahead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we were discussing in response to counsel's statement in his argument that Dr. Roan did not have a basis for arriving at his diagnosis, that Dr. Roan did testify. He relied on the medical reports in part of two different electromyographers who took electromyograms in 2011 and 2013 and got positive readings. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am not going to answer counsel in kind. I am going to continue to try and stick to the evidence, to stick to the facts, to ask you in your deliberations not to go outside of the evidentiary matters, nor the facts that have been presented to you in this case. But at the same time, I am forced to make some comment of some of the items that Mr. Domino brought up so that they will be explained and understood. But at the same time, I am not agreeing that many of these items are evidence. Some of the things I will be talking to you about will be what I term to be misquotes of the evidence and misstatements of the law. Now, in talking about the facts of the accident, Mr. Domino stated to you that according, and this still, I would say, a third or fourth version of what happened because it does not accord with the transcript that I have in front of me, and I will read it to you in a moment. Mr. Domino's client's car was following Mr. Meso's automobile, and Mr. Meso's automobile stopped at the intersection. Mrs. Near's automobile pulled up behind it and they both steered up again. They started up again, Mrs. Near, believing that Mr. Mesa was going to go through the intersection. Well, very quickly, let me read to you the testimony on that point when asked by Mr. Domino himself. 
Okay, so I will read that one more time at 225, okay? All right, here we go. <clears throat> well, I think it is proper rebuttal. I mean, you challenged Roan's findings, and I will overrule the objection. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we were discussing in response to counsel's statement in his argument that Dr. Roan did not have a basis for arriving at his diagnosis, that Dr. Roan did testify. He replied and relied on the medical reports in part of two different electromyographers who took electromyograms in 2011 and 2013 and got positive readings. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am not going to answer counsel in kind. I am going to continue to try and stick to the evidence and stick to the facts to ask you in your deliberations not to go outside of the evidentiary matters, nor the facts that have been presented to you in this case. But at the same time, I am forced to make some comment of some of the items that Mr. Demino brought up so that they will be explained and understood. But at the same time, I am not agreeing that many of these items are evidence. Some of the things I will be talking to you about will be what I term to be misquotes of the evidence and misstatements of the law. Now in talking about the facts of the accident, Mr. Domino stated to you that according, and this is still I would say a third or fourth version of what happened because it does not accord with the transcript that I have in front of me and I will read it to you in a moment. Mr. Domino's client's car was following Mr. Meso's automobile and Mr. Meso's automobile stopped at the intersection Mrs. Near's automobile pulled up behind it and they both started up again. Mrs. Near, believing that Mr. Mesa was going to go through the intersection, well, very quickly, let me read to you the testimony on that point when asked by Mr. Domino himself. All right, how are we doing on time? All right. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a little bit of colloquy. Actually, you know what, before I do that, that, you know, that colloquy is with the light board. So I'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and start just basic Q&A, okay? And this is gonna be plaintiff. And I'll start this at 200 and then work my way up to 225, okay? So it's two pages. So the first page I'll read at 200, second page I'll read at 225. Okay, just, um, all right. You're going to hear Fairgrove Middle School, Mr. Vandermint, uh, Dizzy Spells, uh, Bump, Clumsy, Dizzy, Limp. That's about it. All right, so we'll start with this one. All right, so half 200, half 225. Here we go. Your son was attending Fairgrove Middle School? That's right. The first time that he ever had a class with Mr. Vandermint was in the fall? I believe so. What grade was he in at the time? He was in the eighth grade. Had you known Mr. Vandermint prior to the time your son was taking his class? No. Had you heard anything about him at all? Not until after my boy was struck. Up until that time, had you ever heard anything good or bad about Mr. Vandermint? No. When did you first learn about your son being struck by Mr. Vandermint? It was around the middle of February, more or less. The middle of February, you say? Yes. Was that at your home? Yes, sir, it was. Just how did you learn about it? He told me. Your son told you? Yes, sir. What was the nature of the conversation with your boy when you first learned of the incident? Well, he would come home complaining every day about his legs and about his dizzy spells and about the cramping of his legs and not able to sit down. He, it was the same thing every day. How long had this been going on? Since September? This was in February when he told me this. About how long had he been complaining of it before you asked him about it? About a week. Prior to that, had he ever complained about it? He would complain, but he wouldn't tell me what was the matter with him. When did he start complaining about dizzy spells and his legs hurting? Along in September. September, right after school started. That continued up until February? Yes. During that period of time, were you asking him what caused it to hurt? Well, I would ask him how it hurt, but my sister told me she thought they were growing pains in his legs. I just figured he would be over it one day. Did you ask him if he had fallen and hurt himself in any way? Yes, I did. What would he say? He said he hadn't fallen. Had you questioned him several times about it? Yes, but he never said anything about being hurt until February. Not until February when he really got sick. In February, did he appear to be worse? Yes, very much. Did he limp? Yes. Was it quite a noticeable limp when he would walk? 
very much. Yes, he could not walk the same. Did it appear he had to catch on to things because of his dizzy spells? Or did you notice he would almost fall? Yes, he acted as though he was kind of dizzy, kind of clumsy, like he wasn't himself. <clears throat> he kind of staggered when he walked. Yes, and he dragged his feet to walk. He dragged both feet. Yes. Did you notice anything else? He would trip real easy. Trip real easily. Yes, sir, and bump into things as he was walking. All right. <clears throat> Now we'll go into some colloquy. And um, this is going to be a four voice colloquy. Okay. And again, uh, I'll start at 200, work my way to 225, okay? Here we go. All right, Mr. Taylor is here on the Jones matter. Mr. Mr. Jones is renewing his Ferretta request to represent himself to go in pro per. There was some other things you wanted to raise and I told you to wait until he was here. Yes, Your Honor. Before I do that though, if your motion to represent yourself, your request to represent yourself is granted, are you going to be requesting a continuance? No, Your Honor. Okay, all right. What were the other issues you wanted to raise? Your Honor, at this time, I would make a motion to, de to declare a, I'm sorry, strike that. I would like to make a motion to disqualify Mr. DA as the district attorney on my case. Okay, do you want to explain that to us? Yes, Your Honor, I've been in custody for five months. There is a certain amount of secrecy that's implied or allowed, not to the prosecution, but to the defense, as far as tactics or techniques or rabbits that they are going to pull out of their hats, if you will, that... They are very effective only when they are revealed at the proper time. My only experience, Your Honor, is with my case, but when I actually let all of my rabbits out of the hat, if you will, please, was at my TRC, which was also my motion hearing, and it was at that time that I revealed in court that I revealed to the district attorney and Mr. DA a lot of my tactics and my plans in the form of the motions and arguments that I intended to use in the trial. I feel that, okay, just a second. So you feel like he already knows those things. Just a second. Did he finish his Ferretta warnings? I haven't filled it out yet. I read it, but I didn't sign it, Your Honor. Do you need a pen? I guess before we take care of the motions, I need to resolve that issue, don't I? I don't know the case number. Okay, it is, that's all right. Don't worry about that part. Okay, all right. All right, for the record, while we were in closed session, the defendant was advised of the Ferretta warnings. The defendant has received and signed the record of Ferretta warnings, and that will be incorporated, incorporated into the file. The court finds the defendant is capable of representing himself, and that does appear to be his genuine desire. The court finds that the request isn't untimely and that the defendant isn't seeking a continuance based on that request. And so the defendant's request to represent himself would be granted. And now the other motion which you are now making is your motion to recuse the district attorney's office as a whole or a motion just to disqualify somehow Mr. DA. Is that it? Yes. And just to disqualify Mr. DA and admonish him of discussing the details of the case with any other district attorney that is appointed. Okay, that is based on the fact that it's already been up to the trial stage and it got dismissed and now you are back here. Yes, Your Honor, I would like to point out at this time too, the burden and any delays that resulted in the dismissal of that case were not on the, okay, okay, yes. I'm sorry, I didn't get to really finish my motion. Go ahead and finish it. I feel, Your Honor, that events and or the sequence of events that I just described with respect to revealing all my tactics at the trial level at this point, that knowledge would provide Mr. DA with an unfair advantage over me, and due to that unfair advantage, it would prejudice my, my due process. Okay, that's about it. All right, Mr. DA, did you want to be heard on that? Frankly, no, Your Honor. I have nothing to say. All right, Mr. Go ahead. There are a lot of different situations where the defense has to disclose what they are going to do. One situation that comes easily to mind is after a mistrial where you have gone to trial and the jury is hung and now you are going to try it again. And I don't know any of precedent, any, well, it would be in my opinion unprecedented to say that the prosecuting agency or even the individual prosecutor on the case can't come up and do the other one, the second trial. And I don't know of any case law or any Really, I don't see any logic to the argument that due process would inquire or require that to happen. So your request to have
have Mr. DA or the district attorney's office disqualified or recused from prosecuting this case would be denied. All right, <clears throat> do some regular Q&A. Let me give you a short word list. Uh, you're going to hear chemical, supervisor, Scott Allen, dissolution, disposal, exposure, contamination, Salt Lake City, um, assistance, management, pressure, experiments, research, Mark, Carry, Utah, household, uh, necessities. I think I said that. All right. And this is going to start with plaintiff attorney. And it is for voice. I will read this at 225. Okay. All right. Here we go, ready? In March of 2007, were you living with Scott Allen? Yes, I was. Were you married to him at that time? Yes, I was. Was there any pending court action for dissolution of your marriage at that time? No, there wasn't. Did you have a job and were you working at that time? No, I was not. Whom were you dependent upon for the necessities of your life at that time? My husband. Was that Scott? Yes, it was. Was this his only marriage? Yes, it was. And you had one child of that marriage? No, we had three children. One died. Then you had two living children? Two children. What are their names? Carrie and Mark. How old is Carrie now? 12 years old. How old is Mark? Nine years old. As far as you know, did your husband have any other children? No. At the time of his death, was anyone else living in your household? Both of our children, Carrie and Mark, and my mother. Are both children in school? Yes. Does your mother work? No, she does not. Insofar as you know, was your husband supporting anyone else other than you, the children, and your mother? No. During the last one year of your husband's life, were you familiar with the kind of work he was doing for the Utah Chemical Company? Yes, I was. And what was his job title, if you know, during the last year? Supervisor, any particular department that you know of? I think he was in the chemical research department. I am going to ask you about a typical day for your husband. Can you tell us when he would normally arise to go to work? About six o'clock. That is 6 a.m. or p.m. in the morning. And what time would he get to work to Salt Lake City? About seven, seven in the morning. And was that when he was required to report to work at seven? No. Why would he get there at seven then? He had to set up the jobs and his assistants. Okay, this was his normal habit to arrive at seven? Yes, it was. What time would he come home? About six. The men in his department stopped at 4.30? That is right. Well, then why would he not get home earlier than six o'clock if the work stopped at 4.30? He had to do paperwork. How many days a week did he work? Again, we are speaking about the last one year. How many days a week did he work usually? Usually six. Well, did he work every Saturday? Well, there were very few he didn't work. Okay, are you familiar with what his job was at Utah Chemical, what he did? During the last five years, he was a supervisor. You know specifically what he was doing? Did he discuss it with you? Yes, from your conversations with your husband, what is your understanding as to what he did at work? Well, he had men working for him. They had to conduct experiments and tests. He listened to the complaints of workers and their problems, and he also had to listen to management. At the end of the day, did he ever talk about his work with you? Yes, he did. After work and when he would discuss his work with you, what did he say? Well, he was under a lot of pressure. He was nervous about the careless way the company handled the chemicals and their disposal. What were his exact words as far as you can recall? What would he say? Well, he usually expressed himself by saying he was very worried about exposure and contamination to himself and the other employees. Excuse me, counsel, we need to take a break. The jury needs a break. Okay, your honor. <clears throat> How are we doing on time? Good. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. I will read this at uh, this next Q&A at 225. And again, it is plaintiff questioning. Okay. All right, here we go. 
So you have no, as we sit here today, you have no understanding as to why this bottom photograph was taken. Well, no, the top photograph on plaintiff's three does not. Can I see the originals of these? Mr. Gailey, if we look at the original photograph of the top photograph of plaintiff's three to your deposition, does this refresh your recollection as to whether or not there was an extension at that location at the very end of the wall, six foot wall? Yes, I believe there was. Do you know what happened to it since it's not pictured in this photograph? The very corner one, I'm unsure if that one had fallen or if I had went back and pulled that off because see, after this accident happened, I went to check. So there would be no further, you know, nobody else getting hurt or not. I went to check others that were still standing to see whether some were loose or faulty in some way so that nobody else would have an accident. Was that the first time you ever inspected those? Yes, it was. When you observed Daniel crawling towards the back of the house, did you also observe one of the extensions on the ground at that very moment? No, because I was more concerned about him. Did you observe? I was more focused on him. Did you at some time after the incident involving Daniel observe one of the extensions on the ground? Yes, I did. How long after? I believe it was either later that evening or early in the morning the next morning. Okay, and what did you do with that extension when you saw it lying on the ground? I believe I left it right there where it was, or maybe just scooted it over to lay it flat, and it remained there until when? How long did it remain there? I'm really unsure. I don't know if I finally threw that away or not. Did you, after this incident involving Daniel, then take the, down the rest of the extensions on the sides? If it seemed at all loose, if I could really pull on it hard and it felt unsafe, well, say I went ahead and pulled it all the way off, yes. Okay, on the sidewalls, you never attempted to make the extensions? No, you're talking after this happened, you mean? No, before it happened, on the back wall, the wood was in place between the extensions, is that correct? Correct, I believe I started on the sides. I started from the back wall, coming forward. I think I may have, I don't know, I may have put a, in a couple. I think I ran out of wood or something like that. How far did you, you did what, a couple of maybe eight feet? Yeah, I think I did two or three of them, enough to be kind of seal it from the pool area was my main concern. And how long after you purchased the residence did you do that? I don't know. When you were doing that, did you ever inspect the extensions themselves? No, you just, I just, you just put up extra wood just between them. Yes, I know I just made a frame. I measured it between the bricks, the opening. I made a frame of two by fours. I put my wood on it and drilled a hole where this bolt is coming out and just drilled it up through there. The bolt that's depicted here in the bottom photocopy of photograph of plaintiff's three is a bolt that you put in. No, it's not. The bolt was already there. It was already sticking out of the brick like that. I could see by looking at it that it is actually a stud and a nut on the end. So this is what enables me to put the wood up in between the openings. Okay, if we can look at the bottom photograph, or photo laser copy of the extension in the left-hand corner of the foliage, these leaves, there's some sort of the object there. Yes, what is that object? It looks to me like two liter bottle of soda or something like that. Could I take a look at that? Thank you, counsel. This area between the wall and the house, was that used for storage? I remember right by the front, yes it was, just right near the front. I remember I had a motorcycle, <clears throat> and a quad on the back end right there, right there next to the gate. This is not a walkthrough gate. It's a, it stays stationary all of the time. Okay, as you look at the photograph of this extension, it's a little better than the laser copy. Is it still your testimony that this extension was as thick as the wall itself? Do you recall it being as thick as the wall? This picture is not giving me a very good view of the thickness, but yes, it appears to be the same thickness as the wall. So if we go to the actual photograph of plaintiff's two to your deposition, the thickness of this three brick extension would be the same thickness as the wall as it's depicted here in plaintiff's two. That's correct. And was the, do you notice the holes in the cinder blocks? Yes, I do. Do you know if those holes were filled with concrete or cement? Yes, from the picture it appears that they all are. Had you ever looked up there at the top of your wall? I mean, I guess I noticed it a little bit when I was in the very rear part when I was putting the wood up, yes. And what did you notice? That there is concrete poured inside. Was it flush up to the top? Pretty near to the top, yes. Looking at the actual photograph of the top photograph or top photo laser photocopy of plaintiff's three, there appears to be a wood stud. Is that affixed to your house? 
No, it is not. What is that affixed to? I don't even think it is affixed. I'm not sure. It just may be a board leaning up against the inside. Could I take a look at that, please, Council? Thank you. Looks like a two by four by itself. It may be something leaning on the inside of the side of my house there. Okay, do you recall having two by fours in the area? A long length of two by four at or about the time? I could have, I don't know. And that would have been used for what? Well, for, like I say, I think I also had the wood, you know, a couple of pieces. Maybe it was a bad piece of wood to put in between the eight foot span that maybe wasn't good enough to put along the, you know, while I was putting the things in between it. I told you I had to stop because I ran out of material because <clears throat> a couple, I think, were warped or something like that. So I just had them laying on the side of the house and the two by four may have been the same thing. It may have been warped or something I couldn't use. So I probably just laid it on the side of the house. If we look at the actual photograph of plaintiff's two to your deposition, what is this thing that's sticking up above the wall, this white object? <clears throat> that again looks like the same board you were looking at. I don't believe that's affixed to the wall. Just looks like a board sticking up on the inside of my wall. Belinda and Crystal said they were walking home from the neighbors at or about the time of the accident. Yes. And did either of them tell you they actually saw what happened? Objection hearsay. No, I don't believe they actually saw. Did you ask your son Stephen where he was when this happened? Yes, I did. And what did he tell you where he was? Objection hearsay. He said he was in front of the yard right here, right by it. Had Daniel in his prior visits to your residence ever climbed that wall? No. Do you have any understanding of what type of injuries Daniel sustained? Objection hearsay. Do I have any understanding as to what type of injuries Daniel sustained? Yes. What is your understanding? Objection foundation. That he broke a collarbone. Hearsay. And injured his legs. Also maybe broken his leg too. Was this bush at the time of this incident where all this foliage is, all of the leaves and branches overhanging the fence? I don't know if it was that bad, but it does come on my side, yes. Can I please take a look at the picture you're talking about? Sure. Do you know how far down the wall, looking at plaintiff's two to your deposition, Daniel walked before he fell? Objection hearsay. I didn't see him fall, so I couldn't really say how far he walked before he fell. So with regards to where on the wall in terms of its location, you have no information as to where he fell? Not by any of these pictures, no. Did you ever personally take any pictures of the wall? No, I did not. Did you know your neighbors next door? Yes, I did. And who were they? I think George is his name, I believe, and one of the guy's name. And then there's, I knew Frank. He used to live in the back house, and I don't recall the other one. It was, I always got along with all of them. I don't really know all of their names. When Belinda and Crystal were walking home, did they tell you what they saw? No, they didn't tell me exactly what they saw. They just said he had fallen. Objection hearsay. Were they in the house at the time he fell? Objection hearsay. I believe they were walking from the neighbor's house towards my house. And do you know if they were approaching it from the left or the right? Objection hearsay. From the left. And how old was your son Stephen at the time of this incident in March of 2013? Six and a half. And did Stephen and Daniel go to the same school? I believe they did. And you weren't home when Daniel first arrived? No, I was not. And I take it in March of 2013, you were married? No, I was not. Separated, divorced, single, single, single parent. In March of 2013, who resided at 6616 Caro? Myself, Belinda, Crystal, and my son. Just the four of you? Yes, Belinda and Crystal were how old at the time of March of 2013? It makes them about 13 and 15. And did Belinda and Crystal attend school in March of 2013? Yes, they did. And do you recall what their normal school hours were in March of 2013? I believe it was about 8 in the morning until 2.15, 2.30, somewhere around there. Crystal is the oldest one? Yes, she is. Okay, was Crystal given the responsibility to, at the time, to supervise Stephen Jr. when you're not home? Yes. And this incident involving Daniel occurred sometime after school? I'm unsure if that's a day, a school day or not, but I can't remember that. Do you recall it occurring on a weekend? I don't recall at all. I couldn't tell you if it was a weekday or a weekend. Did you ever give any instructions to Crystal not to leave Steve Jr. home alone? Yes, she knows not to leave. On the day of the incident, did she not follow those instructions? To a point, I mean, it would have been okay with me if she walked to the house in front and walked right back. Where did Crystal and Belinda go? Which neighbor's house? to the one right next door to the left of my house, which is the Taurus's house. 
okay, two houses down, correct. They were really good friends. They also helped keep an eye on my son and my children. Do you know how long they have been gone from your residence? I don't know by my own knowledge, and I know. All I know is that from what they told me, what did they tell you? Objection hearsay. They walked straight there and back. Did they say why they walked over to the Torres' house? To talk to their friend Nikki. And did they tell you where Stephen and Daniel were at the time they left? Again, hearsay. They told me that Stephen was in the front yard. They didn't tell me where Daniel was, no. Did they tell you that Daniel was at your residence at the time they left to go over to the neighbors? Objection hearsay. They didn't tell me that, no. I kind of took it for granted if they walked away. He must have been there playing with his friend. Okay, did your son Stephen tell you what kind of game and Daniel and he were playing? Objection hearsay. No, not to my recollection. Did your son Stephen ever tell you why Daniel was climbing on the wall? I don't know. Did you ever ask Daniel at any time why he was climbing on the wall? Objection hearsay. No, I don't believe I asked him. My son, I told my son not to climb on the wall. They know not to. Had your son ever climbed on the wall before? I saw him on the three and a half foot part and I made him get off. Prior to this incident, when is the last time you saw him on the three and a half foot part? Six months, something like that. Did you know Daniel's mother? I did not know her, no. I had seen her before. Did you and she, following this incident, ever have any conversation? That, objection hearsay. No, I just, well, I had one of my nieces. After I brought Daniel into the house, I had one of my nieces run to their house, and I had them call the paramedics. Did Daniel's mother respond? Yes, she came right away. Did you and she, at that time, have any discussions regarding what happened? Objection hearsay as to anything she said to him. Yes, she asked me what happened, and I said from what I heard that he fell. Aside from that one discussion, was there any other discussion about what happened? Just what Daniel was saying. Daniel was, objection hearsay, Daniel was speaking to his mom, and he was, he was talking to me at the same time. And what was Daniel saying? Objection hearsay. Well, he said that he was falling off the wall and grabbed onto the brick as he was falling, and him and the bricks both fell at the same time. Do you recall what kind of shoes he was wearing? No, I don't. So when Daniel was saying he fell off the wall, did he say what was making him fall off the wall? Objection hearsay. Not to me, he didn't say that. Did you ever overhear what he was telling his mom? Objection hearsay. No. Do you know if Daniel had anything in his hands at the time he was falling off the wall? Objection hearsay. I have no idea. I have nothing further. I have just a couple of questions. Referring to this bottom laser printed identified as plaintiff's three, which depicts a block apparently on the ground. Do you know? You mean it's three blocks or it depicts something laying on the ground. Do you know on whose side of the wall this picture was taken? It looks to be from the neighbor's side of the wall. Why do you say that? Well, because the angle of these leaves out here, the trees on their side of the wall, even on the ground, I don't believe even looks the same as it does on my side. And I don't even have trash on the side of my house there. I believe that's right where they keep their trash can, which is probably why this bottle is here also. Mr. Gailey, what is your present address, sir? It's 19854 Kingswood Lane. K-I-N-G, two words or one? One word, W-O-O-D, Lane. Yes, Kings, plural, Wood, W-O-O-D, Lane, Lane. That's in Huntington, Huntington Beach. Yes, Huntington Beach, California. And what is your zip? 92646. And are you employed, sir? As of now, yes. Where are you working? At Goodyear Tire for about three days now. So I'm having to take a day off now and it's kind of hurting me. Is Goodyear Tire and Rubber or a shop? Is it a shop there? It's a shop. And that's Goodyear Tire in Huntington Beach? Yes, sir. Do you know what street it is on? Yes, it's on Brookhurst. When you saw Daniel, was he crawling along between the fence and your house on your side? He was, right? No, I never saw him climbing on the wall. No, I mean when you saw him, was he crawling along on the ground? Oh, yes, that's correct. I had it, some great objections in there. How'd you do? Say objection, hearsay, objection. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's kind of funny. You would think that they would just agree on a continuing objection, you know? Right. Every, after almost every question, objection, hearsay. Yeah. But my favorite was the pro per guy. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that funny? There, I just rolling his eyes. Yep. 
and I have another part of that. I'll have to find it. And it's, it's before that part and the judge, cause I kind of like ripped them apart into like five pages just so, you know, they're like in different sequences, but the judge keeps asking him, are you sure you want to represent yourself? I don't advise this, but if you really want to do it, he's like, right. Oh yes, I, I'm, I, I'm not an attorney, but I'll be fine. And it's like, Oh man, dude, oh, you don't know what you're getting into. <laughs> Yeah, and then isn't it funny how he wants a different district attorney? And, uh, and he can't talk to anybody about it. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My cat's out of the bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's kind of funny. So I'll have to find the other part. So uh, well, I'm very... I know, I know. <laughs> She's probably trying not to laugh. <laughs> well, so do you have another job lined up? So I told them... So I did my two shadow sessions and then I just have to decide if I'm brave and I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I just don't want, I want to be good enough. You know, I'm just like, Oh, I don't, you know, Donna, you have to remember this, that there are students in 180 and 190 doing this. You passed your RPR. I know. I'm you not, are qualified. I know. But you know, I, I always kind of talk myself down off that by saying, you know what? I spent 56 of the 60 minutes editing my five minute RPR, <laughs> you know, like, but it was, it was a mess, but I could read it. Yeah, that's so, right. Like, someone else couldn't. Yeah. But you, you but have don't to, go that fast, you know, it's yeah, not that's fun. right. That's right. And you know, they wouldn't offer you that if you weren't qualified. I mean, you're more than qualified compared to what some, you know, some it's, people out there. Yeah. Cause they were telling me they both started when they were in school. And they just, you know, they've been there a couple of years now. And so, yeah, they're, it's really clean now. But at first, you know, it wasn't great. But the student has to read that. I don't know. They get their transcript too, so. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes. So you remember that, you know. Yeah, I'll do it. But Jill, I'm taking the written portion of the CSR next on Halloween. Because I, I squeaked in just barely in time to do the written portion this term. So I'm going to try it and see what happens, even though I haven't taken that class in three years and I'm like kind of cramming it in now. So I'm going to see how that is. And then if I don't do well, I'll know what to expect for the next time. Yep. So I'm taking that and then I, okay, so nothing until after Tuesday and then I can think about. Yep. Questioning and. Good and for you. Well. Yeah. So that's on Tuesday. Yeah. And then I only have a month to the CSR to the typing test. So <laughs> I wish, I wish it was local, like in LA, cause I, I'd go down there and support you. Yeah, cause you know what? I, my worst phobia is flying and I know it's totally silly, but I hate to fly. I've always hated it. And this was in Sacramento. So we could all drive, but it's like eight or nine hours to drive up there. And so I was just on the fourth class. I was just on the Southwest. Like, am I going to buy tickets? And it's so cheap right now. Yeah, it's cheap, so, probably cheaper to fly than to yeah, pay for gas, yeah. huh? It yeah. Is. And it's, it's so short and, oh, you know, sign up for the side and just go be a grown up and go. Would you fly the day before? Yeah, I'll fly up yeah. on Thursday morning and then I wouldn't fly home till Saturday morning. Good, good. So then yeah. you, I think it, it would be nice because then you don't have to stress about like, oh, there's a car accident or, right, or my car or whatever. whatever. Whatever happens. I could get yeah. stranded on the road. I'm much more likely to get in a car accident on the way up there. That's right. So, Just whatever you do, take your machine as a carry on. Okay, don't yeah, take it in. Yeah, that no, you. I was already thinking that I have a perfect carry on bag. I take it everywhere, you know, so it's already, it's already perfect. So I'll just good. Take it. I'm so excited for you. Well, I'm excited too. I just, I'm trying to be realistic and I know it's tough, but I'm practicing and I'm doing, I'm doing everything I can. Yes. So, you know, you're, you're being proactive. So yeah. And you'll do fine. I want to get it done. So yeah. bad. before I'm so old, I have to retire. <laughs> you're so close. I know yeah, you're, you're, you're halfway there. I mean, you've yeah. got the RPR now. There's, I mean, look how many reporters are out there that, how their CSR and not their RPR. Yeah. You know? Or I could sell my house and move. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, I was shocked when we moved to Bend, Oregon, when, oh. um, you know, that it's a small area and the largest cities are about three hours away, which was, you know, Portland. And yeah. uh, I, I'll never forget. And this was in, uh, we moved up there in 2007. 
And um, I looked, you know, I went online, I was researching and I talked to a gal that owned an agency in Bend and she said, oh, well, I own my own agency and uh, I'm the only agency in town and, and I'm sure it's gotten bigger now because there's more people, but she yeah. said, I'm, I do all the, the depositions in, in town and uh, I'm the only one here. And she said, if I ever have like two jobs, then I, I'll pass it on to you. But I said, well, you know, I looked into like the requirements and she's like, oh, you have a California license. That's good. You don't even need your, you know, there's no requirement for an Oregon license. It's just, it was just crazy to me, you yeah. know? Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, so she would give me work if like, you know, she had two jobs in one day, but there just wasn't even enough. You know, that was in a little town in Bend and you know, it's kind of different cause it's in the middle of the state. So you have to kind of, you have to drive over, uh, you know, the, the mountains there to get to like Portland and Eugene. So it was kind of a different situation, but, um, yeah. it, there's so many States where, I mean, we hear that California, Texas, and, uh, New York are the three hardest states. So once you have your license in a lot of states, they'll say, oh, well, you have your license in that state, you're qualified. Um, you know? Yeah. So tell me, um, if you have a minute, yeah. just tell me, so when it came to doing my depot hours at school, I didn't, they were so hard to get because it seemed like every time I got one, this double would fall through and cancel. Happened so much. So I think my biggest concern about my tests, like my written test with the depot information is like, what are my responsibilities as a reporter? Like, and now they have the, this is how the court case goes. This is how it goes. How does the deposition go? Like, do I, when I get in there, are you talking about like if you take a deposition? Yeah, what are, so do you do, do appearances on a deposition? Do you make sure everybody's in the rooms on the record? Yep. Just like you would in court. So like, and, and one of the things you have to remember with depositions, which is kind of nice is your um, agency is going to provide a trans, like provide the transcript for you. I mean, you still have to edit it. Yeah. You know, you're going to proofread it, edit it, get it, you know, you're going to take it home and edit it. And then once that's done, you're going to give it to your agency and they will, you know, they're going to put it, they're going to do this for you. Right. They do all that for you. So that's nice. You don't have to worry about it. You know, they're going to print it up and, but, um, so that, that part is, you know, done by the agency, but you just have to, you know, edit, but, um, you know, you're going to ask, them, well, they'll pretty much let you know most of the time they want it within two weeks so that the witness can read it and uh, right. make any changes. But if they want it expedited, they're going to let you know. So then you're going to get paid more if, if they want it expedited. So they'll let you know, like, Hey, I need this in, you know, four or five days. Okay. Yeah. You're going to get paid more money for that. So that's always nice. Mm -hmm. Um, but your agency is, is going to help you out a lot. Like they're going to tell you what the format is, like what, like every agency is a little different with their formatting. Yeah. Like some might want to, you know, a Q and a, um, with a period after that. Others don't like look just little, you know, so I always saved all my different formats. If I work for a few different agencies, okay. and, um, but that's, that's about it. And you know, the faster you can get your jobs in, the happier they are because, it's showing them that you're on top of your work and, but, um, but basically, you know, that, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, you're, you know, you're, so I think maybe I stress out about it because, um, it seems to me just from a student perspective and having been to both court and depots, like in the deposition world, you're, you gotta be in control of it. Whereas in court, there's, you're just there to write, you know, and everybody else is taking care of it. So when it comes to all the deposition codes and things like that, I'm a little bit, do I need to know all those code numbers and which code goes with what number and like all the rules for my test? I, I mean, I know the rules, but do I need to know this rule is this particular code number? Do I need to memorize numbers? Yeah. I mean, I, they, <laughs> they, and, and again, my, I took the test. Uh, oh, let's there see. Go. Yeah. November of 1994. That's how long. Nice. But um, there were codes in there. Um, definitely, there were there were codes that, like my instructor said, you must know these. These other ones probably won't be on the test. Right. But um, maybe you could reach out, you know, go on social media and just say, hey, what codes, like for people that have taken it recently, what codes yeah. are you seeing on there that, yeah. you know, 
that definitely are usually on the test. I talked to Sarah Gad. Do you know Sarah? Yes. So I talked to her on Facebook and she said, oh, you know, here's the book. And I still have my, my um, procedures book from school. Uh -huh. She said, I had marked in here, no these codes. So I've been going over those like Good. Um, deadlines and um, the charges for different, you know, transcript pages and folios. And I know all that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, that's what I'm doing and just hoping that it's the right the right ones. Yes. Yep. Yep. So that's, that's good. Sarah Gad, that's a great resource. Sarah yeah. is amazing. So and she's a new reporter. So she, she's taken the test more recently and knows, you know, that these codes were definitely on there. Don't worry so much about these. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So, uh, I guess I'll know. I'll take it next week. And like I said, I thought, you know what? It's not very expensive to take them, and it's going to be a great learning. You know, you'll know what to expect if you don't do well. You'll know what to expect. That's right. I love mm -hmm. how they run it now because when I took it, um, the you had the academics on Thursday, and uh, no, 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 I take that back. Academics were Friday, and the machine was Saturday, so it was like a two-day thing, and it was so yeah. stressful because. You know, there was just, you, you were stressed one day about the academics and then the very next day you're on your machine. And yeah, so, you know, I love that they separate it now. I think yeah. it's a great advantage, you know. I've been telling people too, because my RPR experience was really not that difficult. And I think, I think the CSR to me seems a, a lot more difficult. Even like the practice tests are a, a lot harder just more detail, more difficult. I think if, if you can get your CSR, you can get your RPR. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's how I feel too. Cause I think it's a, just a lot more um, detail for California and the RPR, you can take it. You can try three times a quarter, you know, for each wow. test, you can, you have three shots at it every three months. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. It used to be, you had, you know, you, every six months right you know, to be yeah so I, I I really like that they've you know been a little bit more lenient now with things yeah. because I think the pressure takes the pressure off you know exactly. I definitely would go over your um you know start looking at your flashcards yeah. um, save all those <laughs> my and husband's like every room I go walk into there's flashcards yes <laughs> I just have them everywhere <laughs> yes uh, my family used to laugh at me too. I remember we went to the river one summer and I was literally sitting on the beach looking at my flashcards and, exactly. <laughs> and they were, they were everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So get out those, you know, legal and, yeah. oh. and, and, yeah. uh, cause you know how to punctuate. So I my know. punctuation, I think I'm good. Yeah. They're just tricky. They're tricky. I'm taking the practice test and they try to trick you up. Yeah. You know I'm bad. I'm not a great speller. And if the word is on the page, I just assume it's spelled correctly. And so when I'm looking for a spelling error, then I just doubt everything. I doubt everything I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know how to spell contain. I don't know how to spell recommend. I don't, you know, I just, it drives me nuts. When yeah. like, it's like, there's these errors or no error. I'm like, well, if there, if I knew there was an error, I would find it. But if it could be no error, then I doubt myself. So if you see a word and it's misspelled, can, does it look, can you look at that word and know, okay, that, that's not right. Like if it's a like, normal, if it's, a, if it's one of those tricky words that you don't see all the time, like, like idiosyncrasy, I had idiosyncrasy last night and I was like, oh man, does that have an H in it somewhere? Like trying to mess me up. But I, it was right on the page yeah. and it looked right to me, but, but as soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh no, I don't know. What to <laughs> yeah. So did you get it right? Yeah, I just, I, I yeah. didn't get it right, but yeah. I don't know how to put on the test. And then, um, like I said, this, there was this, uh, a totally common word last night that I was just like, I don't know, how, that looks right, but I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because there's spell check now. I don't, you know. I know. I know. I know. For me, it was the vocab. That was my challenging yeah. part of the test was the vocab. So. Yeah. I think everybody has a part where they go, ah, oh, you know, that's going to be my challenging. Well, um, the girl that I sat with yesterday was telling me, and she's a stage student too. What's her name? Anyway, um, she said that she knows someone else who passed the typing part the first time, but they've had to take the written part three times so far and haven't passed. Oh, 
Uh, yeah. And, and I think that the people that don't, that don't really, um, study, I, I think it is a problem. I, I mean, you really do have to study, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Cause I think sometimes people think, Oh, I'll, I'll remember it. I'll wing it. But it, no, I don't, I don't, I think you're right. And the RPR to me wasn't that way. The RPR was like, I got, you know, I can do this, you know, and it, and I did study. I had the purple books and I studied for two weeks, you know, really straight. Um, and I did fine. Yeah. But the California, as I'm studying, I'm like, this is harder. This is harder. Yeah. A little bit more detailed. Yeah. 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 Well, it, right. you, <laughs> good luck on Tuesday. And did you see the, um, did you see what, Robert put out there that we're going to add more classes yes. next. So Wednesdays and Fridays now, right? Yes. Perfect. That's great. I love it. Yep. So we're adding more for, we're adding another low, low speed live class, mid and a high. So. You know what? And I should be taking the lower ones too, just for my accuracy. So I'm going to try to fit those in as well. So I can just go slow and accurate too. Yeah, absolutely. And then see how it is. If it's too slow, then don't worry about it. Yeah. If, the yeah. mid speed definitely, but yeah, if you find that it's slowing you down in the slow, you know, or in the 60, 80, 100, oh, I, would, no, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't take that. Good. But I thought you meant that one. Yeah. So yeah, that can all down one level and just yeah. really be accurate. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can awesome. focus on your real time with those. Perfect. You know? yeah. Yeah. Putting in punctuation and that would probably be good for your practice with your um, cart, you know? Yeah, I agree because that's true. I don't, ca I don't put in a lot of punctuation. Mm -hmm. When I'm just going 225 I and mean, whatever, I'll come back and get that. Um, but in car, you have to tell them, you know, right. <laughs> right. Here. Exactly. Well, if I don't see you before Tuesday, good luck. Thank you. I'll just if let, I experience. Yeah, let me know. And how long does it take now for you to get your results for the written? I don't know. You know, yeah. the RPR, they gave, they gave you a result right away. That yeah. was like a temporary result, you know. I want to say, well, at Sage, it seemed like it was taking about four weeks for students to kind of get back to us and say, hey, this is what yeah. you know, I found yeah. out. So it seemed like it was around four to six weeks. Yeah. But, um, but who knows, you know? Right. Well, I'm just going to take it and then I'll assess after I take it and go, okay, I'll just sign up again to take them for the next term, depending on, you know, which, how I do and then study accordingly. Yes. But I'm kind of going in blind. Like I don't, I don't know what to expect as much. So we'll see what happens. And, and yeah, and like you said, with Sarah, you know, reach out to her and just say, yeah. Hey, you know, what, yeah, what I have. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. All right. We'll see you next week. All right. Yep. See you next week. Good luck and Thanks have so a much. great weekend. And I hope you get a lot of studying in this weekend. Right. I will. <laughs> Thank your family. You. I'm so close. I am. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later. Bye, Donna. Bye. Bye.